Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about knife making measurements. So recently I got a note from one of my Patreon subscribers named Sebastian Steckel. Uh, and I'll go ahead and just read that note quickly here. Hey there, Walter. I've been thinking about disc grinders lately and if one would make a nice addition to my shop. In most of your videos, I see you flatten handle scales with your disc grinder. Do you ever use it in metal? And maybe you could give me some ideas on the topic of tolerances. In your everyday practical work, what tolerances are you accepting? 0.1 millimeter difference in thickness from the left to the right of the scale may be okay, but the cutting edge 0.1 millimeter out of center is bad. So uh, let me first answer the, the basic question, which is, can you use a disc grinder to flatten metal pieces? Absolutely, it's great, especially for softish metals like brass, you know, for bolsters and uh, all kinds of other things that you might want to flatten out. So let's turn to the issue of tolerances. Um, first, definitions. This is a measurement issue. Um, anytime you're making something, you're always going to be aiming for some kind of particular length. You know, how long is the blade going to be or how thick is it going to be, that sort of thing. And um, there's no such thing as actually hitting that measurement perfectly. At some level, it's always going to be off from whatever this nominal dimension is that you've said this something's going to be. Even if it's a billionth of a micron, you're never going to be able to hit anything dead on to an absolute level of accuracy. Um, so let's say we want a knife to be 10 inches long. Tolerance is the amount of wiggle room, so to speak, that we have in hitting that nominal dimension. We're aiming for 10 inches, but how much room are we willing to go plus or minus in order to, um, you know, and sort of feel like, okay, we're still hitting our mark. So the amount of wiggle room in the tolerance for the length of a blade might be an eighth of an inch, several millimeters. Um, it might even be longer than that. Whereas the amount of tolerance in something much thinner, say the thickness of a blade or handle thickness or something like that, uh, is probably going to be much, much, much tighter. When engineers and machinists talk about tolerances, you might see this on a drawing. So this means that you have a specified diameter of half an inch with a tolerance plus or minus two thousandths of an inch. So let's turn to specifics and really get into some common important dimensions on knives and what would be reasonable tolerances for those uh, particular dimensions. So in order to figure the answer to these questions, you know, you have to look at what are your goals in the making of a particular knife? You know, why would you even care about this? Well, there are two things really, um, and I take it as a given that, you know, there's certain things that, you know, the measurements uh, will just have really obvious functional reasons, certain length of a knife or uh, the size of the handle's got to fit your hand and that sort of thing. Um, but let's look beyond that. Um, first, obviously you want everything to fit properly um, so that the knife can be assembled at all. And then second, you want it to look good. So one is functional and one is more of a perceptual or visual kind of thing. So let's start with the functional issues first. Um, and a great place to start with that is holes. You typically need to drill holes in the tang to fit a pin or some kind of fastener. Obviously the hole has to be big enough to fit the fastener, but beyond that, well, it depends on how you're putting it together. For instance, on my Tactics Armory knives, I don't use glue to hold the handle on, so the pin has to fit the hole very, very tightly, what engineers would call a press fit, or the handle's going to rattle and move around. The pin material is well within a thousandth of an inch of the diameter of the hole, so much so that it has to be lightly tapped through the hole with a hammer. On the other hand, if you're epoxying the handle, you might be able to have ten thousandths of an inch, which is like half a millimeter of clearance, and you're really not going to cause major problems, especially if you're using screws or you're peening the pin, so you have both epoxy and clamping pressure helping to hold that thing on. 
Just a clarification here, I'm talking about the clearance between the pin and the steel of the tang, not the clearance between the handle scale and the pin, which would need to be a little tighter in the range of a couple of thousandths at most. So look, do I measure holes typically? Do I specify them really closely? Do I use pin gauges or anything like that to establish what these tolerances are? No. In my case, and this is going to be the case with most people, you buy a certain kind of pin material or you buy screws, whatever it is. Those are particular sizes. And so you have to gauge your holes off of how well that existing material fits. Again, with a screw or a Corby fastener or something like that, a generous clearance something in the range of you know half a millimeter or ten thousandths of an inch is just not a problem at all but if you want that pin to be press fit through it's got to be much much tighter so let's turn to blade symmetry so you always want to have the edge centered in the middle of the blade but obviously there's some going to some kind of tolerance that's going to be there so how centered you know functionally it doesn't really matter if it's off by a little bit for most typical uses for a knife, but it does look pretty bad. So you want it to be centered to within a couple thousandths of an inch. That's the kind of tolerances that I'd uh, accept. Likewise, you don't want it to vary down the length of the blade more than a few thousandths. In other words, how, how much it diverges from being in the center of the blade, I want it within a thousandth or two, and then how much it might wiggle as it goes up the blade. I probably want that even smaller, like just a thousandth of an inch. I want that to be really precise. Now look, there are a ton of ways that you can measure this. A granite surface plate is incredibly useful in the knife shop, and you can use a dial test indicator or height gauges to check your dimensions. But a quick and dirty approach is to use a depth gauge. You can just set it up on the flat and then sort of slide it over the edge and see exactly where you are. So look, do I actually measure symmetry on my own blades? Very rarely. Here's why. I've been at this for a pretty long time and I can almost invariably look at a blade and I can spot whether it's off by a few thousandths of an inch. That might sound like a really tiny amount, but it's actually fairly visible. So, you know, my approach is not usually to measure it if you know and see if it's wrong but if it looks like it's wrong then i'll measure it and i almost invariably find that if it doesn't look right in fact it's not right and my measurement confirms that so along the same lines it's not uncommon for a tip to get bunged off to the side a little bit uh, sometimes that happens by just natural warping during the heat treating process. Sometimes maybe you'll bump it as you're heat treating so that even if you had it perfectly ground when it went into heat treating, it comes out a little bit off. So how, how do you go about measuring that? So simple test, again, just pop them on your surface plate. It doesn't have to be a surface plate. It can be any piece of kind of engineered flat material, a chunk of aluminum, a piece of micarta, glass, whatever it is and then see if your point is symmetrical. Again, you can use a gauge of some sort or you can just scribe a little line on some piece of material and you'll be able to tell how far off it is. Again, what's the right tolerance? At the end of the day, if you can see it, it's a problem. If you can't see it, it's not. So what about the thickness of an edge? Personally, I aim for around 15 thousandths and it's gonna depend a little bit on the particular knife and you know, I don't really knock myself out trying to make sure if it's 15 thousandths here that it's exactly 15 thousandths there. I'm willing to allow a, a little variation, one or two thousandths on that. And when you get right back to the, um, the plunge line, right before the plunge line, it's always going to have to thicken out there naturally. And sometimes, you know, on that last little portion, half an inch or so, it may expand by a couple thousandths of an inch, and I don't worry about that too much. Okay, so flatness is another really important issue, and this is particularly important with the handle of the knife. So if you're buying precision ground steel, honestly, it's pretty rare that you're gonna have problems with the knife itself in that sense. Sometimes they may, might warp or whatever, but sort of the inherent flatness of the steel is gonna be pretty good. So the main issue is how flat does the handle material need to be? Again, 
The main check is visual. If there's a gap between the tang and the handle scales sufficient to result in something that you can see, then you need to tighten it up. And this is simple to measure. Now there are ways that you can measure this using engineering tools. You could sweep it with dial indicators and that sort of thing, but again, that's really not necessary. Just hold the scales up to the light with a straight edge on top. If light gleams through, it shows that you have a gap, there's still a flatness problem, and you want to keep flattening. Even a few thousandths will show. Bear in mind that if you're using, say, a disc grinder, having a little piece dished out in the middle is not the only problem. You can have problems with rolling edges or with twists. So first, rolling the edges. The light gap test won't help you here, but still your ruler will work. What you can do is put the ruler across there and then push on the edges and see if it'll rock. If it will, you've rolled your edges and you need to fix that. What about twists? In that case, what you want to do is go across all the different dimensions. You know, basically go on your diagonals. Again, test by trying to make it rock or to see if you can expose gaps that light will show through. In either case, that'll demonstrate to you that you have some sort of twist or lateral imperfection and you just need to keep flattening. Again, the numerical tolerance is less important here than the visual test. If you have a tiny light gap caused by a very gradually dished center, say a thousand or two over a five inch slab, there's really no sin in using the fasteners, clamps, glue, whatever it is, to kind of squash that into compliance. However, if that dished out portion is short, say over an inch of span, then squashing it into flatness is gonna compromise the strength of the joint and it may pull loose later. And you can actually often feel that kind of gap with your fingernail on the side of the tang. So there are plenty of other tolerances that you might be concerned about on a knife, but let's just stop here and kind of draw some general lessons. The first is the more good measuring tools that you have, the better off you are. But I always just start with that good old El Cheapo $30 pair of calipers. I use mine probably 80% of the time uh, in my shop for measurement and uh, you know I turn to the more you know the fancier and more expensive tools mostly as the exception and not the rule. So second point for most knife applications and, and this is specifically for fixed blades not so much for uh, folders um, your eyes and your fingers are actually your best measuring tools. If it looks right and it feels right, most of the time it probably is. I'm not going to say all the time, but most of the time it probably is. Folders, that's a whole different question, and uh, we're going to get into that another time. All right, guys, so thanks for hanging out with me this week. I hope this contributed in some modest way to improving your knife-making skills. Um, if you have questions for me, don't hesitate to, to shoot me an email. So I haven't done a lot of Friday Fives lately, but uh, trying to kind of get them back into the mix. And uh, your questions are always the great starting point for me when I'm uh, doing these Friday Five shows. All right, see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamones or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamones as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!